This is your boy, Will Stewart from OnlineChessLessons.net, and we're going to be kicking things off today uh, with a game from 1996, the Geneva Grand Prix uh, PCA event. And with the white pieces, we've got Vizmanov and Anand, our current world champion, uh, versus, uh, well, one of the best players ever, Gary Kasparov with the black pieces. And so we're going to be kicking things off today. Anand comes out swinging with E4, and what does Kasparov play? Uh, you know, we're going into an open Sicilian here with d4, knight takes d4. And uh, here with a6, Kasparov signals that he wants to play his patented knight or defense. And so Anand plays bishop e3. And this is leading to uh, normally the English attack with f3, although you can transpose uh, to a couple different lines, the Opusensky with bishop e2, for example, maybe even... Uh, Fisher Sozin with bishop c4, although I'm not, not so crazy about that. But normally f3 is going to be followed next. And, and so here, Kasparov plays an anti-English line that he really developed back in the 90s. You know, this game was in 96. Kasparov was really playing this line a lot. This knight g4, and, and basically it just, you know, says to the bishop, what are you going to do, guy? You know, I mean, um, a lot of people actually with white will play bishop c1, and black just goes back. You know, and, and sometimes you'll see some grandmaster draws like this. But Anand, you know, and this was a 25-minute match. Uh, it's kind of the mini-match uh, rapid knockout format that the PCA was using in this Grand Prix event. And um, Anand's got white, right? You know, you're, you're playing a mini-match, especially you gotta, you got to try to win with white. And so he plays bishop g5. Kasparov plays h6. And after g5 and bishop g3, this is... Uh, kind of the starting point for this line. And so black usually plays bishop g7. Uh, white has a lot of options. He can play h3, f3, queen d2 here. Anand uh, goes with kind of the more positionally sound line where he develops a piece, puts the question to the bishop, or, or to the knight here, rather, on g4. And, um, well, knight e5 is certainly possible, but Kasparov plays h5. I, I think this is still the main line today. And so h5, uh, the idea is to support the knight and, and also threaten uh, h4 soon. And so this anti-English line with the knight g4, I uh, played it a couple times myself, it is very interesting, really uh, highly dynamic positions in the middle game. And, uh, well, it's, it's very different. It's very complicated. And I really like black's position. It looks like black's game is completely ridiculous. But the big benefit for black is that he's got this e5 square for his knight. And that is uh, a very important square, and he's locked that down nicely uh, with the pawn here on g5. So we'll continue. Anon captures uh, the knight, and I think to stop it from going to e5, really. And so now um, Kasparov goes with bishop takes. Also possible to play pawn takes. Uh, personally, I like bishop takes a little more, though. I, I think it flows better to not uh, let these pawns get doubled here. And so f3, certainly logical, and now bishop back to d7. In some lines of this anti-English, you will see the bishop go to e6. But I think after having played h5, it, it just, maybe this is a little bit too loose here with these pawns. Uh, possibly an immediate h4. Just It just feels you're trying too hard. You know, the pawns are too loose. So Kasparov goes bishop back to d7. Now white just you know kind of sidesteps. He tries to take the sting out of a you know a pawn advanced by black and knight c6. So just calm development here. Let me see queen d2 and Kasparov plays knight e5 and this is not so calm. Actually, this is pretty aggressive. So what's the deal with knight e5? The knight is extremely well placed. You know white can't really kick it out with f4 right now, and uh, it's also threatening to hit the c4 square where the knight on c4 is an absolute monster. Well, white's critical response would have to be queen takes g5, and this actually loses the queen on the spot. So knight e5 was a pretty nice, very sharp move. And um, if queen takes g5 here, we have simply bishop h6. And now the queen only has, uh, I guess it's got three squares. You can go to uh, h4, g3, or take the pawn on h5. Well, let's make it easy. If he takes on h5, we play check, discover attack on the queen. That's, a, that's a, a queen for a piece. It's a pretty good deal. If queen to g3, we're simply going to play h4. The queen is trapped, and we have the same check. 
as in the previous uh, example. And if queen h4, just knight to g6. And just, uh, it's the same story. There's absolutely no way out uh, for, white's, for white's queen. I mean, it's, it's completely, completely trapped. So, that's a nice move. Uh, 95, it certainly seems to work. White can't touch the pawn. And black is playing very quickly uh, with, uh, you know, his, his the pieces in the center and everything really up in the pressure against white early on. So white decides to castle kingside. And this was probably a good call, though, you know, he is kind of castling into an attack. The thing about castling queenside is that this knight c4 move is just so strong. The knight is just devastating there. With the half-open c-file, black's queen must surely go to a5 soon. The bishop pointing at his king. You know, this looks like the opening has gone pretty well. So going queenside, that's a mess. Going kingside, you're still castling into the pawns. But, you know, the thing is, if black doesn't get a really good position, or, or at least, you know, if he doesn't get a good position out of the opening, if he's unable to maintain the initiative and, and maintain his attack, he's going to be in some trouble strategically. Long term, he's got some holes. You know, these pawns can become big weaknesses long term. And also not to mention uh, white's knights are, are pretty well placed in the center. So here, Kasparov plays e6. So he takes care of the problem with the knights. You know, the knights no longer have f5 and d5. Also, the queen is now uh, defending g5. But these, pushing this pawn to e6 here, it does have a major drawback that it weakens the d6 pawn forever. And so this pawn is going to be uh, very weak. However, if Kasparov is able to play, uh, you know, energetically enough here, uh, he, he's going to be okay. He'll have compensation for the weakness of the d6 pawn. And so Anand starts out with b3. He doesn't want to mess with knight to c4, and I think that's pretty understandable. And so Kasparov now with knight to g6, basically uh, just uh, kind of taking real firm control over f4 and also opening the bishop up uh, along this diagonal. And so rook to d1, eyeing some pressure. I think rook, rook fd1 didn't make quite as much sense because this bishop is just hitting that rook, you know, in long term or whatnot. So I, I think this makes sense to put the rook on the, the d and, and maybe the e file later. And so now Kasparov starts spicing things up. There was no surprise there. Uh, he wants to open lines against black's king, um, or, or against white's king, rather. And uh, here, you know, white could maybe try to win the d6 pawn. So knight to e2. This is a really sketchy move, though. And allowing Kasparov, nonetheless, uh, allowing your opponent to open up this, this h file and this attack here, you know, it's not even that clear you're, you're even going to be able to take d6. Black can actually, uh, you know, similar to, to the tactics in the game, rook to c8. And the problem is white can't take d6 because he loses a piece. And he, just, he loses a piece. Out. So it's it's pretty tough. I mean, it's like where do you you know how do you defend this pressure on the C file so you can take the pawn on on D six? It's very difficult. It's not an easy question to answer. Uh, maybe Bishop to D four. I mean, maybe uh, that maybe that could work. But um, I still I, I'm really not that convinced. You know, maybe just E five. It's kind of an ugly move to make, but would open some lines. Hey, just, just kind of on a conceptual basis, I, I think if black can maintain counterplay against white's knight here on, uh, on c3, then black is going to be okay. He'll have compensation for the weakness of d6. So in the game, Kasparov pushes forward with g4. Uh, white decides, I think pretty prudently here, to uh, keep the king's side closed. And Kasparov just continues you know, pushing in the heat here. And, um, well, it looks like maybe he wants to establish a focal point on f4. Maybe he wants to push the g-pawn or the h-pawn. Uh, either way, you know, he's trying to fix uh, the pawn structure uh, very ambitiously on the king side. And so white does play knight d2. And so white uh, kind of uh, defending some threats here on the king side. Also, the knight defends the knight on c3. And so white is actually threatening to take the pawn on d6. So Kasparov with h3. He says, hey, man, you, you want to take the pawn? You know, do you really want to take the pawn? 
uh, and weaken your king side this much, this this will be very risky. Um, let's just say if king takes, I mean, maybe knight to h4 check, trying to come in. I mean, it's just, just sketchy business. G3, maybe in some lines. I, I don't know. I mean, there's just there's so much stuff hanging over white's head here. And um, so, you know, I guess, you know, he could have taken on d6, but it was really sketchy. It was, it was pretty dangerous. So Anon, he plays g3, and he tries to blockade the king's side. And so he does achieve a blockade, but now black has kind of lasting space advantage and pressure on the white king. And so now Kasparov with rook c8, queen takes d6, doesn't work because the bishop takes, um, bishop takes c3 or rook takes c3. And so white plays e5. It's a pretty nice move. Uh, he uh, is ready to sack a pawn if necessary. You know, first of all, he's trying to shut down the bishop, but if bishop... Uh, let's say if pawn takes e5, I think knight to e4, and this this d6 square is looking pretty juicy here for white. This is looking nice, like like a pretty nice square. And so, um, you know, I guess uh, Kasparov didn't really feel like allowing that, so he played d5. And so that, that after e5, this is a this is a big positional victory uh, for white. Even though he didn't get to win the pawn, he does get to shut out black's best piece, the bishop here. You know, he gets to shut it down completely. Also, black does have the two bishops. You know, black's light square now. It's going to be a lot more difficult to work with these pawns around uh, around white's king on this diagonal. So pushing, making making black push this pawn, a big positional victory for white. So knight to d4, and white's position really does look pretty good here. You know, I mean, he's uh, black spent so much time pushing these pawns up here. He spent like eight moves, and now they're completely blockaded. And so with the knight on d4, I mean, you know, let's compare the pieces, right? Knight on d4 to knight to, to bishop on d7, I mean, the knight on d4 is killing it. Um, so I, I think that white's position looks looks preferable here, it, it seems to me. I mean, it just, you know, straightforward. Black castles seems a little crazy, but uh, I guess, you know, if, if he pushes, we can just take on f5 and take on e5 and, well, you know, white is going to be spicing things up a little bit, but... It looks like this is really going to benefit black. He wins a pawn. He opens a position. And uh, especially opening the position, we're going to see, really benefits black in a lot of these lines because he's got the pawns just hanging out by white's king. You know, so white white has achieved a blockade on these pawns, but if the position opens up, if black can, can land some pieces uh, on that diagonal, then white is going to be in some trouble. And so we're, we'll see how Kasparov kind of uses that against Anand. And I'll play his queen to d3. I think he's just trying to improve his position a little bit. Uh, maybe, you know, kind of eye this this knight here and, and maybe, uh, you know, kind of get ready. Maybe maybe trying to set up some tactics on e6, you know, whatnot. And so now Kasparov plays f5. And if he can get away with this move, he's going to have a, you know, he, he's starting to turn the tides now. And uh, it, it seems like he is going to get away with it. Uh, I mean, basically the, the critical move here would be on Passant. And so I think, you know, rook takes or queen takes is the only move. You have to defend the knight. And if queen takes, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think white still has a pretty good game. Maybe this would have been preferable for Anand. I mean, it's dangerous. It's very dangerous to open the position with, with these, you know, pawns right over your king. But also moves like f5 here. And it seems like uh, even though the position is dangerously opening, it's very dangerous, uh, it seems it seems interesting to me. I mean, it, it seems like White at least has a good amount of counterplay. Uh, maybe Queen E three. You know, he did. You know, these squares again. You know, I can't say it enough. I mean, those it's very uncomfortable. But um, I don't know. Maybe 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 okay. You know, maybe he was worried about Knight F three. This kind of tactic. Yikes! This is pretty devastating. Um, you know, if takes we have Rook takes here. Black is going to win a piece. And if he doesn't take. Let's see, knight takes. Well, first, if queen takes, we have rook takes c3. So that's going to lose a piece. And second, if rook takes, it'd be e5. Oof, man, this is just... This got bad. This got really bad. Um, probably either bishop c6 or rook takes, followed by bishop c6. The whole thing has gone south. Black is, black is about to be winning. 
Uh, either either with just bishop c6 here, I mean, he's going to win a lot of material. So I think that line, uh, that was a pretty nice sample line that illustrates, uh, you know, kind of the dangers white faces if he, if he does uh, in this position, if he does go with the en passant here, uh, if he does take here, you know, opening up the game, and, and f5 would be the logical move, and that just gets messed up. I mean, this this just gets busted. And if, if not f5, I mean, you know, I don't know. Black is going to be able to to resituate here, and it looks like he's got a nice game. You know, the more the more open the position becomes, the more his two bishops and his extra you know threats around White's king are going to be felt. So Anand didn't do it, and he played knight c2. And so he goes for a different plan. Uh, he, he says, okay, you can have all these squares. All right? you, you know, just take, take all these squares. All, all this stuff is yours. And what Anand does is, is he plays to maybe open the C file and open the D file and open pressure there. And so white, uh, black, just rook, F, rook F7. Uh, he starts getting ready to organize his pieces and bring them towards the queen side. So rook c1, bishop f8, these are good moves. You know, just, just reroute the bishop. Maybe, maybe one day it'll go to a3, harassing white's rook and, and strengthening black on the c file. And so uh, white plays c3. I didn't really like this move. I just don't get it. I, I don't know what this does. It seems like a waste of a move. Uh, I guess, you know, bishop b4, but that wasn't really, you know, like that didn't really do anything either. So I, I think... Uh, C3, I just didn't like it. And so knight e7, so Kasparov, you know, just really changing all of his pieces uh, towards the queen side. And so rook d1, uh, Anand is getting ready to break open the d-file with c4. And now knight c6. I think in this position, it was in white's best interest to exchange knights. Because what's going to happen here, and, and we're going to see this become more significant throughout the game, uh, is that White's knights become pretty redundant. Both of his knights would like to be on d4. That's, a, that's really the only good square for White's knights, uh, was, you know, for the foreseeable future. And, and so both knights want to go to d4, but, you know, you can only have one knight there at the same time. So this, this idea of redundant knights, uh, you know, I, I think just go ahead and take this sucker. You know, pawn takes, not really a concern. You, you could either snatch this pawn if you wanted, or probably just c4. And it seems to me that white has a very nice position. Black's bishops just don't have anywhere to go. So I think taking the knight, uh, you know, if knight takes, we, we just knight to d4. And uh, it, it seems like this would have been significantly better for white. Instead, I don't play c4 here. Kasparov takes, rook takes. And so now black kind of wants to play b5 to, to push this guy back. But the problem is moves like knight takes c6, and we're going to feel this pressure on the d file. And uh, this, this looks uh, very good, very good for white. Rook takes here. White is just dominating. And uh, if, what else? Knight takes, if he takes here, I believe, maybe knight takes d8. This looks pretty nice. Uh, it, it just seems like, uh, shoot, man, I mean, even queen takes, just with the pressure here on the d-file. And white should be winning a pawn here. If rook takes, we just take it. And white's up a pawn. Active rook. So anyway, just a sample variation, playing b5 with all this pin-up pressure here. Uh, probably not the best move for black. And so that's why Kasparov goes queen e8. Also, queen e8 defends this uh, e6 pawn. And so now the problem is, for white, that the position is open like this, is that if he plays knight takes c6 now, he's just helping black put his bishop on this monster diagonal. Knight to d4 is going to run into a bunch of different moves, but mainly the bishop just dominates incredibly. It's, it's got a home on any one of these squares, wherever it wants to go. Say bishop e4. And now, you know, I think we're starting to see that uh, white is probably not going to be doing too well here. I don't think he's having a good time. Uh, black is going to be dominating. So anyway, just a sample position. Uh, after queen e8, you know, knight takes, d knight takes c6, no longer nearly as effective. 
And so he tries uh, queen to d2. So I, I think trying to take control of the b4 square. Black blasts forward. And so now after rook c1, uh, we have uh, knight to b4. And so knight to b4, you know, it seems like with knight to c3, white had a good plan here. It, it seemed like he didn't feel his knights were redundant. He could still swap off black's knight. You know, now, um, you know, it's a good question after rook to c7. White played a3, and, and the, you know, he puts the question of the knight, where does the knight go? If he goes here, you're busted, right? This, this is horrible. This, this would not be good uh, or, or whatever. I mean, you, you know, knight takes, and it, it's just very bad for black. Knight to d5. And knight to c6, maybe he could take it. Takes. And queen to d8. Or, uh, you know, maybe if you don't want to lose the uh, a3 pawn or, or leave it loose, you know, b4 here even. And in this position, you know, it looks like um, black is certainly better. He's got a lot of very annoying mating threats that are going to happen on this diagonal. But it seems like white can, uh, he, he can probably be okay. He's got good control over the open files. But, you know, unfortunately for Anand here, you know, it, it really did seem like the knight has nowhere to go. And he's got to trade it off. But unfortunately, Kasparov came up with a very nice idea after rook c7, very sneaky plan. And now we just have a lingering checkmate just hanging over white's head. And so he's got to defend it with the queen. Really no, no way to block this diagonal. So he's got to defend it with the queen for now. And so now Kasparov plays knight to d3. And this is what made this guy so good. This is what made him a world champion for 20 years. A dominant world champion. Uh, is that, uh, you know, once he, once he got the initiative, you know, he's played very patiently all game. He finally gets, you know, a chance of an attack, and he just lets it loose. And, and literally every move is now worth his weight in gold. So knight to d3, really nice move. White's queen can't move. It cannot leave the g2 square. Otherwise, he gets mated on the spot. So this knight starts getting crazy. Uh, after rook c2, you know, Kasparov, he, he could maybe try to take this pawn or, or something like that. I, I don't know. He just plays b4. He blasts forward. He tries to get all of his pieces into the game. And so now white goes knight to a2. He didn't want to let the bishop get developed. You know, it, it makes sense. I mean, e either uh, knight takes is okay or bishop takes here even. Um... This is a mess. I mean, this, this is, even just knight takes. Either way, and, and with this open now, you know, black is just, he's going to have a, a lot of pressure. So Anand tries knight a2. He tries to defend. And so now black plays knight c5. And this was a really nice move. So at first time I saw it, I thought it was a little crazy. Let's take a look at the candidate moves for white. What if he takes the pawn? Knight e4. If queen to e2, with knight c3. And that's going to be winning an exchange and, and just a really nice position. So rook takes, pressure. Um, if something like bishop d2, maybe we're going to take on b4 here. And let's look at the resulting position after that mess. Uh, black is up in exchange. White's only got one extra pawn. And the long-term mate threats on the diagonal uh, still exist. So let's take a look at some other ideas. What if pawn takes? Now I'm thinking Kasparov was planning knight e4, queen e2, rook takes c2, and so now we're going to see just how dangerous this, these threats are. If knight takes, a move like bishop b5 is devastating. It kicks the queen off of this square, and wherever the queen goes, we can just play something, whatever kind of threat we can think of, probably... Um, Probably knight g5. Oof, man, that looks nice. Just threatening mate, threatening knight f3. That's toast. And so going back here, that was if knight takes. If queen takes, a move that I was thinking about was rook to h7. And this is just pretty twisted. Uh, it just sets up this threat of knight takes g3, followed by h2 check. Just a very basic threat. And uh, I haven't really been able to find a good defense for white. It's absolutely just sick. I mean, white's up just a pawn here. Material's pretty equal, but this, this threat is just so nasty on the, on the diagonal. Uh, and now black's just threatening to take. And whatever, if white doesn't take it, he would just go back with the knight and push g3. And he's breaking through. 
And uh, let's say if bishop here, we have some similar ideas that just opening up the mate and it's going to win some material for white. Uh, what else? Let's say knight e2, trying to go after this guy. And now it's maybe not quite so easy. Black's got to be a little creative. If knight takes, knight takes, he's okay. But I think maybe bishop b5, eyeing the knight. And uh, you know, let's say knight here. And it just, you know, the guy's, he's all tied up. Maybe knight g5. Maybe it's a good time for, for moves like knight g5. I just got to think that black, you know, maybe he gets his pawn back and he's just, you know, a huge edge here. A huge edge for black. So let's go back to the game. And that was just, I want to show some sample lines of what's up with knight to c5. And, you know, really, a really nice move. And so now, uh, Anon played queen e2, so I think he's trying to minimize the effect of knight to e4. And so now, uh, Kasparov just snatches a pawn. White plays b4, and, and so it looks like maybe, maybe black has miscalculated. You know, I want to say, again, this is a 25-minute game. So this has been pretty incredible play for 25 minutes. And uh, I think the guys are probably getting a little bit low on time now. So playing b4... It seems like uh, Black's miscalculated, and his rook on c7 is a loose piece. However, after bishop a4, you know, we're going to see that uh, it's, it's not so easy for white. First of all, if rook takes, uh, I think we're just going to play bishop takes d1. And coming out of the resulting mess, Black is going to have two rooks uh, for three pieces. Wait a second, that didn't even make sense. After bishop takes d1, if he takes here... This is checkmate. He's still got the checkmate open. All right, so that, that should... Uh, <laughs> forgot about the checkmate. So, so yeah, you know, just looking in this position after bishop to a4 in the game, um, rook takes, just runs into bishop takes, and, and there's a checkmate. Black's going to be up a lot of material. The move in the game, pawn takes, led to bishop takes, knight takes, bishop takes. And, uh, man, this is a tough position. I mean, if white... You know, you don't really, two knights versus a rook is, is pretty much, it's not a very good material balance, especially the knights here don't have any good squares. You know, if a knight could get to d6, it'd be different, but that's a long way away. So a move like knight d4, or just rook, d8, rook d7, and this really just illustrates the problem with, with white's game here. This constant mate threat, he can't do anything. Like if knight takes, just play rook takes, and white's entire position falls apart. So Anon, he trades, rook takes. So, so white has achieved in some good trades here. And knight to e1. And so material balance, we have a rook and two pawns for two knights. But the knights are, are purely defensive. They're not doing anything aggressive. And so now white has defended the checkmate with his knight. Black plays a nice move, rook b5. You know, he didn't have an entry point on the c-file, so it didn't really make any sense to double on the c-file. All of these squares are covered. And so for that, he plays rook to b5, and now he's getting in. And he's going to be using the, the you know, dangerous pass pawn as well as controlling the second. It's a nice threat. So white, he finally can activate his queen. Now the mate is defended. See, rook to b2. Kasparov is just crazy. He doesn't even care. He just, he's just going for mate here. And so after queen e6, you know, Anand plays his cards. I mean, he's got to get some counterplay. We see rook, or, or queen to a7 here, that's right. Very sneaky by Kasparov. If rook g2, the obvious threat, I think king f1, and it's, it's not really that easy. This might even be a draw, because white, you know, if, if first of all, you can't move off the 8th rank with your queen. We have queen g6 check, rook d8 is mate. And so second of all, you know, if you can't move the queen off, I mean, it just, it's kind of like, what do you do? Rook takes, and it looks like white, with, with a series of checks here, is probably going to be able to hold this. Uh, I don't really see, you know, it's, it looks pretty tough. I mean, I, I think white is maybe going to be able to hold this position. It's going to be difficult. Difficult for black. So instead, in this position, instead of rook to g2, he played queen a7. And so this was just very nice, very subtle check. 
And so white can't go to f1. He gets mated on the spot. So he goes king to h1. And now the point of Kasparov's plan, why he let Anand come in and take the pawn on e6, he sacks the rook. And it's a temporary sack. We have a four series of checks here. White is helpless, and black, uh, black's going to get his money back here. Takes the rook on d1. And so he only got one pawn for the rook, but you know that was a pretty important pawn there on h2. Now black has two very advanced past pawns. And uh, you know white is in a lot of trouble. White's main problem is that he can't draw. He put king f1 here. I mean, just, just an example of check. Another check. And um, I think something, you know, the queen is, is covering d6. And I, I think something like this, maybe, like queen h4 and probably king d7. White's out of checks. Black has two pass pawns. He's threatening the knight. It's a king here. And, uh, uh, you know, black is, black's got to be winning here. I mean, maybe just queen d5, just to consolidate the position. Uh, still eyeing these squares, defending. I mean, black's, black's got to be winning here. And so, okay, so white doesn't have a perpetual check in this position. So really just very well calculated. And so white, he tries to defend. Black, he just comes back. Let's make it easy on ourselves. Trade queens. These two pass pawns and the rook would be more than enough to win. Uh, white tries to snatch a pawn. And not just snatching a pawn, he's also threatening e6. And black just plays h2. He's e6, not that much of a threat, really. He can just make another queen. And, uh, okay. You know, just, just an example here. If e6, just make a queen. And there's you know, probably some kind of checkmate coming soon. So, okay, uh, after, in the, in the game, white played check. You know, he tries to throw a couple more checks. And in this position, white resigned. He can't stop the pawn from promoting. And he's, he's run out of checks. So what a psycho game. I mean, this was only a 25-minute game. Uh, such an incredible amount of strategy and tactics. Kasparov, very patient. And I think once Anand, you know, if we go, if we go way, way back to the middle game, uh, I think once Anand missed his opportunity to exchange knights, let's go right here. I think with c3, Anand started losing control of the position. When he played c3 in this position, he should have just played rook d1 and, and c4 if that's what he wanted to do. And uh, I think c3 was weird. You know, it was like... He kind of wanted to defend passively and not open the position with c4, and then he realized, like, black is just going to be able to open it anyway someday. And so with knight c6 here, he, he should have traded off one of these knights in, in a better circumstance, and now to play knight d4. You know, I, I think this is pretty clear. And maybe he just plays for the draw, honestly. Maybe, like, bishop d7, maybe just b4 even. And... Um, you know, maybe he just tries to close down the queen side instead of anything else. So anyway, a, a really fantastic game. Uh, really, uh, those those Kasparov and Anand battles, uh, Anand battles in, the, in the 90s were pretty nice. So this is Will Stewart from OnlineChessLessons.net, and thanks for tuning in.